Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Kidney Coach YouTube channel. I'm naturopathic Dr. Fiona Chin, co-founder of the Kidney Disease Solution Kidney Coach and our supplement formula, Clygenesis. And I am joined again today by the beautiful, amazing, wonderful Kelly Tom. Kelly is a <laughs> hey Kelly. Kelly's a renal dietitian with a expertise in diabetes uh, related to kidney disease. She works with the beautiful team at Kidney Nutritional Institute. And Kelly is on today to talk about all things diabetes and kidney disease. Kelly, thank you so much for joining me again today. I always appreciate your wisdom and knowledge when it comes to diabetes and kidney disease. How have you been? Good. Well, thanks for having me again, Fiona. I love uh, spending time with you and talking to your audience. And we always have such a good time together. So thank you again for inviting me. I appreciate it. Of course, of course. So you wanted to go over just some basic tips for people that were diagnosed with kidney disease and diabetes, and normally it goes diabetes first and kidney disease, because I know there's a lot of confusion about what to eat, what to do, what differences, what's most important, kidney disease, diabetes. So how about I hand it over to you to share your words of wisdom and top tips for um, what you see works with patients and from our, from clinical trials that you've done? Okay, great. I love it. Yeah. So today I just wanted to talk about some tips, some starting points for folks who have, now we're talking type two diabetes or pre-diabetes tonight, even some metabolic syndrome, maybe a little PCOS would fall into this category. I am not, however, talking about type one. You are a very special people and so things can be a little more intense with you. So I just wanted to say that up front that I'm really addressing our folks with type 2 diabetes, prediabetes, metabolic syndrome when Perfect. we're talking about uh, diabetes and kidney disease, right? So having worked in diabetes over 20 years, I know I've had many people cry in my office because I got diagnosed, right? They were putting it off. They were going to do something about it. And they never did anything about it. And then they get the diagnosis and they just feel very overwhelmed. So I want to talk about just some starting points, some basics that we can actually do to make a difference. So, and then on top of that, then you get kidney disease diagnosis and you're like, now what am I going to eat? Am I going to eat tree bark, tofu, you know, a little dirt? I mean, what's left? <laughs> some mung bean and sprouts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so most of you folks who come visit me at KNI come in starving yourself, eating like your 90 year olds in the nursing home. You know, you're lucky if you're eating a thousand calories and that's not going to keep a rabbit alive. So I just want to make sure that we're eating and nourishing our bodies because remember part of diabetes and kidney disease is healing and we can't heal unless we're eating enough calories unless we're getting enough micronutrients and macronutrients, meaning the protein, the carbs, and the fats, okay? Yeah. So again, baby steps. But the first step is eat. Let's eat, people, okay? Let's not be, who, who knew a dietitian would tell you to eat? I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> please, let's start with some eating, okay? All right, <laughs> so let's start with the diabetes piece of this. So the very first thing that you wanna do if you want to get rid of or start to slowly cut down, go at your pace because it has to be sustainable. Mm. I want you to start with any kind of sugared beverages. So if you got regular pop, if you live in the South and you love your sweet tea, uh, mm -hmm. Kool-Aid, um, <laughs> juice. <laughs> no yes. more drinking the Kool-Aid, Kelly. <laughs> yes, no more Kool-Aid. Um, <laughs> 100% apple juice, right? That sounds so healthy. No, it's all pure sugar. It's mm. like rocket fuel, right? We take it in and 10 minutes later, our blood sugars go from 80 to 300. That's how quickly that jumps in. Matter of fact, we use those things to treat low blood sugar because they work so rapidly, okay? Mm. So that's a first step. So if you have those things in your life, you have a lot of you're a candy, ice cream kind of person. Let's start to cut it back. Let's look at, are there other substitutions that may not give you that same satisfaction, but be pretty close? That would be a good alternative for you to try. And mm -hmm. start with one or two things a week. Set two small goals a week. 
and really work on it. You'll be surprised how quickly this will come together. Okay. I'll give you an example. I had somebody, I probably had the highest A1C I'd ever seen in my career. I had someone in the ICU came in with an A1C of 23. I didn't think that was possible. Whoa. So um, the doctor, of course, was ready to put them straight on insulin. And because I knew what they were doing, I said, give me a month. Let me see what I can do in a month. And if we are still have an A1C over nine, then fine. Go ahead and put them on insulin. So they were willing to do that. Well, guess what? This person, are you ready for this, people? Was drinking two, two liters of Mountain Dew a day. A day. Oh, my goodness. No one so we worked, at a, say we worked at a level that they were comfortable just to bring that down. So we'd bring it down a couple of glasses or a glass a day um, until we got rid of that completely. And believe it or not, in two months' time, that person went from a 23 to a six. Wow. Just by getting rid of all the sweets and the sugared beverages in his life. So mm. that's how much those small changes can impact your blood sugars. And I'm starting with diabetes and blood sugars because when our blood sugars are out of control or our blood pressure, we've talked about this in other episodes, that's the number one and number two reason that we have kidney decline and folks end up on dialysis. Okay. Yeah, number one and number two. So the mm -hmm. first step before you worry about restricting your potassium and your phosphorus and all these things you think you need to do, I want you to get your blood sugars in control 100%. by working on small things. Okay. That's a good point, Kelly. And I just want to reiterate for that for everybody, you know, kidney disease, you know, you'll continue to damage the kidneys. If your HbA1c and blood sugar levels not controlled, same with blood pressure, it's far more important than potassium and everything else when it comes to kidney diets, it's getting those controlled. So that's a really good Absolutely. point. Absolutely. And again, go back to our video on monitoring, whether you're using mm -hmm. a blood glucose monitor or those really cool CGMs we talked about. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to see how different foods are affecting you because we're all different. We yeah. don't live in a box. We're not all the same. And so I want you to pay attention because that's great, easy stuff. You can be like, all right, I'm willing to start to change these things because this took me the highest and I have other things that I would be able to exchange those out for. So that's a good mm -hmm. starting point. Okay. Yeah. So get your blood. Sorry, I'm a little itchy. Allergies. Um, <laughs> so once you get your blood sugars in control, so we we've kind of started to take something away or maybe substitute something out. Now I want to add something in. So one of the positive things that we can do, another positive thing, is I want you to start to increase your fiber intake. I can tell you that many people that I've worked with over the years are eating about 10 grams of fiber a day. Okay, let's wow. put that in perspective. We're looking now, again, your dietitian would personalize this to you. But in general, we're looking at 25 to 35 grams a day and you're doing 10. Mm -hmm. Okay. Almost guarantee we got some bowel issues going on. We either got some constipation or diarrhea, gut health issues, because we're, we're not in a regular mode here. <laughs> so we want to add fiber in, but do I want you to go from 10 to 35? Not unless you want to write me some really mean um, <laughs> comments in the session, because you won't leave the bathroom probably for several days or maybe a week. Okay. <laughs> so we want to increase it slowly. Don't go. I'll, I'll tell you another funny story. So my mother will kill me, but I'm going to tell you her story. So you all know, you know, there's all those bars out there, right? And the fiber one bars, I think have like nine or 10 grams of fiber in them. So but they're sweet, right? So a lot of you people with diabetes, you have the sweet tooth. So she ate one of those. She has diabetes and she decided that wasn't enough. So she had two more. <laughs> so she had 30 grams uh -oh. in a short period of time. Uh -oh. Let me tell you, she was not a happy girl. She had a lot of tummy troubles for the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. So again, and Yes, I know the bars can add it in. Yes, I know you can take things like um, beta fiber and things, but I want you to try to get it through food, through natural sources, okay? You know those things called vegetables? 
yeah, I would like you to eat more of those. (laughs) (laughs) Um, More fruit, more vegetables, more whole grains, beans. Yes, you can eat beans, guys. Don't be afraid of the phosphorus and beans. Our bodies don't absorb it, okay? A lot of good, healthy plant protein in there. Mm -hmm. Um, And some resistant starch. If we have time, we might talk about that tonight. Mm -hmm. So definitely we want to add those kinds of things, okay? So definitely more fiber. Now, if you're reading a food label, and let's say you're looking at bread, how do I know which bread to pick? What's a high fiber bread? It should have a minimum of three grams of fiber per serving or usually per slice, okay? Four or five would be better, but at least the three would mean it had something. A lot of those out there are gonna have two grams of fiber, okay? Mm. So again, we're talking about fiber um, right now. So I just wanna, I know there's a difference with the white bread and the protein and stuff, but that's a whole nother conversation, okay? (laughs) All right. So I want you to use some kind of a food tracker out there. Um, We love Chronometer. Chronometer shows us a lot of really cool stuff. There's Mm -hmm. a lot of free apps out there. So use whatever one you're comfortable with. But you want to get some idea. The crystal ball method of I think I'm doing this doesn't work really well. So just track for a week and just see what you're doing. Just get an idea of where you're starting. Who cares? Don't shame yourself. Don't criticize. Be like, this is my starting point. And I'm going to start to chip at those small little changes all the way through. Okay. Mm -hmm. And again, look at your fiber, look at your sugar intake, especially in the beverage department. So we're going to start there. Now, fiber is important for several reasons. So fiber breaks down very slowly in our guts. Okay. And so that slow breakdown means that the sugar in the carbohydrate is released slowly. So instead of like when we drink the Mountain Dew, and like I said, five, 10 minutes later, we've got that big peaking up high, you're going to peak much lower and stay more steady longer. And Mm -hmm. you're also going to feel full so that you won't eat an hour later, right? You might eat three hours later, which would be better for your body, okay? If you eat and you eat an hour later, your body looks at it as one big group of food. And so these carbohydrates that you had, now we have to add them all together. So you thought you had 30 grams, or really you had 75. And your body's like, whoa, that's why your blood sugars were 300. So all that timing and spacing of meals is a piece of this as well, okay? So work on your fiber, more fruits and vegetables, beans and legumes would be good, whole grains, those kinds of things, more variety, the better, right? The more micronutrients that we get in our diet. Mm -hmm. So I want you to have those. Uh, Fiber also, for those of you who are struggling with constipation, which is a very real thing in kidney disease and in diabetes, that Mm -hmm. fiber is going to help move things. However, if you eat more fiber, you must drink more fluid or you will make bricks. And then again, you're going to write me and you're not going to be very happy with me. So make sure, especially in this hot weather, we're going to need to drink more. Okay. Unless you're on a fluid restriction because your, your, your legs and feet are swelling up. Just make sure that we're drinking. Okay. That's really, really important. Mm -hmm. And then moving. Because we have to get the muscles, especially as you age, our muscles in our gut slow down. They're, they're not squeezing and pressing and moving everything down and out. So by taking a slow walk, even if you can only walk 10 minutes and it's really hot, pace in your living room. Walk 10 minutes. Or if you're sitting for long periods of time, every hour get up and just do a big circle around the inside of your house, okay? All of that will really help move everything along. Positioning too, those little squatty potties, all those things can be really helpful little tools mm-hmm. for you guys who are struggling in that department. Okay, that little sidetrack. But in terms of fiber, again, prevents colon cancer, slow delivery of carbs throughout your body, so we have much steadier blood sugars, which is our goal because we don't want to damage those kidneys. Okay. So really, really important for all of our health. Now talked about sugar, 
we talked about fiber. Oh, there's one little caveat on fiber I do want to talk about. So there's something called resistant starch that you guys might have read about. And so resistant starch is a starch that doesn't just think of the word resist. It's resisting breaking down. So it resists breakdown in the small intestine, and then it ferments in the large intestine. And it actually makes really healthy food for a good bacteria. Mm -hmm. And another little thing I wanted to say, and I, I hope this all pieces together for you folks. So we've got prebiotics and probiotics. Here's the easy way. I always have like easy ways to remember things. Probiotics, think of pros like footballs, right? They're professionals. Mm -hmm. So those are the good bacteria in your gut. They're fighting the battles in there. You know, they're in there, you know, get everything good. And the prebiotics are like pregame. You know, it's like what those football players would eat to keep them healthy, to do their job in there, to keep everything good. So fiber, especially that, um, I just lost my resistant starch, <laughs> that fermented fiber, right? Really feeds those good bacteria. And we need those to have good gut health. Okay. Mm -hmm. And good gut health affects our kidneys because it can help reduce the uric acid that our bodies are producing that our kidneys have to process and filter out. Okay. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. Do you have so, a favorite, favorite sources of resistant starch? Yeah. So here's a super easy one for those of you who, who don't believe in that dirty four letter word cook. What cook? You're going to ask me to cook. <laughs> <laughs> there's a ton of recipes just go to google and put in overnight oats okay mm. so we're not cooking the oats we're soaking them and when we soak them overnight they produce this resistant starch and they're great because they're super versatile you can put them with yogurts you can put all kinds of little toppings in there and you can customize it to you you're doing it the night before i'll take you five minutes to throw something in a jar throw it in the fridge, and then it's good to go in the morning. So super, super easy. The other thing that I love are um, if you uh, double boil your potatoes or you have some leftover rice, mm -hmm. okay? So that next day, so make those and use those like as a part of a salad because we don't want, again, like a big old pint size like from the Chinese place of rice. That's a lot of carbohydrate for your body to process. But if you threw some of that cold rice leftovers in part of a salad, right, to add some texture, it'll also help keep you full and add other nutrients again. That could be really good. Or, you know, like I said, a potato salad, those kinds of things would be, you know, good once in a while. Again, not a mm -hmm. big portion, but super simple. The other thing are things like sauerkraut mm. and things like that, right? that are again fermented that can have some of those things in it green bananas my plantains. favorite I make green, yes green banana pancakes yeah yeah so again any of you from the islands probably um have used a lot of plantains in your life there's a mm -hmm. lot of different cultures who live on those kinds of things so and there's a ton of recipes whether you want them savory or maybe a little sweet or you know however you want to use them they're really good just know mm -hmm. like the green banana flower that's finally come out that those kind of things require cooking and heat does destroy the resistant starch. So yeah. it's not that, you know, it's no good. You just lose a lot of those benefits as we add heat in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I just want you, and then also ladies and gentlemen, beans and legumes. Okay. Now remember beans and legumes are half carb and half protein. So we're getting a little bit. So again, Kind of watch those protein bank accounts and what you're doing, okay? So generally, the folks that I've worked with in diabetes, um, in the old days, you know, we had these bank accounts of about, for ladies, 45 to 60 grams. And for men, we would do uh, probably 60 to 75. Well, over the probably last five years or more, we've noticed that lower carb people do a lot better. So low carb is defined as 60 to 130 grams, okay? 
So where before you might be having 200, 220 mm. grams. So again, slowly back that down. I found a lot of my folks, I came from a company where we did a lot of really cool um, groundbreaking things with low carb plans. And we, I saw most of my people did really well at about 30 grams a meal, which is pretty low. Okay. So kind of keeping that, that would be in the low carb region and unbelievable what it did to their labs. Their A1C came down, their Mm -hmm. lipids improved people who had fatty liver, all of a sudden their liver labs were good. So Mm -hmm. we saw a lot of amazing things just by getting that sugar down. Okay. All right. So um, we've talked about uh, fiber. We've talked about sugar. Um, And so the other things that I want to talk about too is keto, because this is getting to be a big thing, right? It really is. And so keto everywhere. But the problem is most keto that you're going to find out there, including those little meal plan delivery places like Factor and some of those others out there, I'm not picking on Factor, it's just a lot of them are similar, okay, Mm -hmm. is they're what we call Mito Keto. (laughs) So Mito Keto means there's a lot of animal protein. And so when we're combining diabetes with kidney disease, We have to watch the amount of protein we have Mm -hmm. because too much animal, number one, is too big of a protein load for the kidneys to have to process. But the other problem is the more animal you have in your life, the more acidic you are, which means your inflammation is much higher. And a lot of the root of metabolic syndrome, which diabetes is a metabolic syndrome, Mm -hmm. is inflammation, people. Yes, inflammation, sugar, processed fat, meaning like lard, canola oil, used to think is healthy, processed, crappy oil, soybean oil. Those are all really inflammatory. So we want to change over to healthier oils. We want to go to avocado oil, which is a high heat oil. So if you're going to cook, use avocado. Don't cook in olive oil. Olive oil is a finishing oil. If you add heat to it, you destroy all the beautiful things of olive oil. So again, use coconut oil, use avocado oil, use sesame oil if you want to add some flavor. Sesame, you need about that much because it's super flavorful. And if you put too much, you're going to be like, (laughs) and it makes great stir fries, which are super easy to use with that leftover cold rice, right? Just kind of Mm -hmm. warming up a little bit. Okay. So I just lost my train of thought of where I was. Keto. Um, Keto. Thank you. (laughs) Okay. So with keto, it's really important. If you are on insulin of any kind, long acting or mealtime, you need to work with a professional Mm -hmm. because you're at very high risk to end up with low blood sugars. And I can tell you the clients I've put on keto and worked with personally They were wearing, I made them wear a CGM. They couldn't work with me without a CGM. And within two weeks, three weeks, I just had somebody who was on uh, mealtime. This is just one person here that I'm talking about. So, you know, everybody's different. Um, Two and a half, three weeks, he was off all his insulin on keto. Mm -hmm. So that's how much it can change things. And he just got his A1C and it's the exact same as it was when he was controlled on two different types of insulin on nothing. Amazing. So super cool results there. The other thing is, again, um, many of you people with type two struggle with your weight a little bit. So it can help take that visceral fat down, right? That mm-hmm. insulin resistance that's causing us to need things like insulin can come down. Okay. But the difference is, like I said, you need to work with a professional if you're on any kind of insulin or any kind of oral medication that puts you at risk for low blood sugars. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's really important because they'll make, they'll communicate with your doctor and make sure you're coming off medicines. The other thing I've seen with keto is it can lower your blood pressure. So you'll Mm -hmm. need to be willing to monitor your blood pressure. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then also in a good keto program, 
I know y'all you're doing your CGMs. You're like, I don't ever want to poke my finger again. But when we test ketones, we do blood ketones. That's the most accurate. So for a while, you do have to poke your finger again. But with the new needles, trust me. And if you do it right on the sides, not on the, the ends, it's not painful. Okay. But you really want to work with a professional for those because you really yeah, should be monitoring and have safety things in place. It's mm -hmm. really important. But the benefits are I've seen A1C come down to people going into diabetes remission, even on the low carb I was telling you about too. Same thing, mm -hmm. diabetes remission, people coming off blood pressure medicine, coming off all kinds of diabetes medicines or reducing them. So tons of benefits, lipids getting in control. We just had somebody who had a genetic um, problem with their triglycerides. Mm -hmm. They were over 500 when they started working with us yeah, and wow. they came down to normal in 12 weeks. Amazing. So again, super cool things. But what we do at KNI, we don't just do keto. We do plant-based keto. Mm -hmm. Does that mean it's vegan keto? No. We allow a little bit of animal. We might add a little chicken. We might do a little dairy. Okay. So we're going to add a little bit in there but we're going to have a good bulk of that from plants. Why? Mm -hmm. Fiber. Okay. And the other bigger thing is it keeps your body alkaline. We've talked about this yeah. and it keeps that uric acid down. So this is real important to understand. And if you do keto wrong, trust me, I've done keto before myself, the right way and the wrong way. And keto flu is not a joke. It really feels like the flu. You feel like you've been run over by a bus. And so again, real important, the first time you do it, that you learn to do it right by working with a professional. That's really, really important. So that yes, again, you get all those amazing benefits that I talked about, okay? Mm -hmm. And so again, going back to the beginning, cut back your, your liquid sugar or any kind of added sugar, start to reduce that down. Okay. We talked about adding in some good fiber. We also talked about, we're going to do that, move a little bit, mm -hmm. add in some water so that we have mm -hmm. good bowel movements on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. We also talked about starting to control our carbs. And the mm -hmm. easiest way without counting is get yourself a CGM. Yeah, for sure. Eat what you normally eat and see where your problems are. And start yes. to replace those foods with lower carb or more plant-based alternatives and start there. Okay. Yeah. And then look at the amount of protein, get into a free food logging thing. Look how much protein you're having. Again, talk to a professional. Even if you do one visit, they'll calculate your protein needs and you'll be able to see, whoa, I just had somebody today met for the first time. They're having three times the amount of protein they should be having. So. Yeah, right. It's a get, you think you're doing well, but you don't really understand. Or here's another good example of we're thinking we're doing great. And we find out, ooh, as I get some education, maybe I could still improve. So I had somebody who uh, was going to one of the famous subway places, you know, to get like a, a sub sandwich and all they had on there were veggies. So it, it sounds really good, doesn't it? bread and a bunch of veggies, super healthy. But one of the things they didn't know is a lot of places, a lot of restaurants use a sodium wash on their vegetables so that they mm -hmm. stay greener and fresher longer. So that little six inch sandwich had 650 milligrams of sodium in it. Whoa, that's a lot of sodium. Yeah. So again, little things. Don't shame yourself. Don't feel bad. So, so I, what did I tell this person to do? Cut the six inch into two, three inches and have that. And then three hours later, four hours later, have that for your dinner. Mm -hmm. That worked. And that worked for their total daily sodium instead of having most of it in one meal. <laughs> <laughs> so again, those are some really good things that you can do to make a big difference. So it's all about small changes. Don't get caught up with Dr. Google and all the restrictions. Many of those things 
really won't come into play unless you're in stage four or stage five kidney disease. Because we look at your labs, we look at you as an individual, and it's really important that you're not doing a diet, but you're doing a sustainable lifestyle change. If not, it's not going to last. And you're wasting your time, whoever you're working with, because you want to do things that, that make you feel like, okay, I can go out with friends. I can go to a restaurant once in a while. I can make something easy and quickly at home that makes me feel happy. That kind of meets those requirements that we talked about. And there's yeah. so much, we're in such a good place today. Honestly, if you put in plant-based uh, or low carb, even though, even the word vegan, even though you're not going to be a vegan, yeah. we'll all be plant-based, right? And then you could add in a little dairy if you want to do a little dairy or a little animal in there, if you wanted to kind of balance yeah. that out for yourself, but go back to small steps, start with eating and see What are you willing to change first? What's the easiest? What's the lowest hanging fruit that you could start to take care of and then work towards the harder things? Because let's face it, some of those things I've had people that that pop was like their girlfriend. It was like breaking up with an old girlfriend, right? (laughs) And so, and so, you know, we had to tack that last. We had to come at some other things or we, we work that down one small glass or half a glass at a time whatever felt like it wouldn't be like, you don't take a smoker who smokes two packs a day and go down to nothing. Right. right? Not if you want to live with that person. So we can <laughs> work on it the same way because food, we, we have culture, we have habits, we have emotional ties to food. Like we do any other thing that we use to pacify ourselves, um, to manage our stress and all those things mm. that maybe are not our best habits to handle everything. Yeah, really good tips, Kelly, and and doable, you know, like it's I think people just think about all the changes they have to do and either it goes into the too hard basket or, like you say, people do really big changes, which is amazing, but it's not sustainable. So we're looking at doing things that are sustainable, long-term, that you can implement that make really big changes. And back to your point, a continuous glucose monitor really is the best way to empower yourself to really know what foods I don't know if I told you, but I had one of my patients, we couldn't figure out what was spiking her um, insulin and why she was still having food allergy type symptoms in those using. So, well, lettuce. She yeah. had an insulin spike to lettuce. Who knew? But only, and even food testing didn't bring it up, but the CGM did. So, you know, they're really great at just giving you that feedback that you might not get other places. So, And it, it might just- not even have been the lettuce. It could have been the preservative in the packaged lettuce, right? There's exactly. so many things that we think, oh, this is just lettuce. But when we start to look in there, the things they do to keep things fresh, you know, uh-huh. to make them look beautiful on the shelves really impact us, right? So it's really important that we understand what we're putting in our bodies. You know, so many times over the years too, I've had folks say to me, it just, I, Kelly, I would love to do it, but I just feel like, you know, the expense of eating healthy is so expensive. And this is what I finally had to say to some folks that I that I knew were definitely financially challenged, okay? Because I've worked most of my career in impoverished communities. So I said, I want you to look at the whole picture. You're looking at this much. So if you continue to have the pops and the chips and the fast food and the things that are easy that you enjoy that come off the dollar menu, what are you paying over here in doctor's Mm. visits, in medications, um, in quality of life? Because now you have to inject yourself several times a day with your insulin and figuring out how am I going to do that and go out and keep that private at a restaurant. And all of those things that become such a burden, such an inconvenience, that if we just switch where we're investing the money, the front end or the back end, you will spend that money. And so you've got to look at the whole picture. I had somebody who during COVID worked at a hospital and all the pharmaceutical reps are bringing in all this free food. And we Mm -hmm. had to have a conversation of, was it really free or what would it cost them in the long run? Yeah. So all of those kinds of things, it's just a balance and and they're not easy conversations to have with yourself. Trust me, I've had some hard conversations with my own self. So (laughs) 
they're just habits. And so a lot of this, probably my last biggest tip, and this is probably the one thing, it's kind of like physical therapy. Nobody wants to go to physical therapy, but you have to go to physical therapy to get better sometimes, right? right? Well, this is the same thing. It's called mindset. Working on this mind muscle and realizing that you have to look at these things as a therapy and not a diet. Mm. It's what you need to get your diabetes in control. It's not something you can do for a month and then go right back to your old habits. It's the same thing with kidney disease. The more we make these changes permanent, the longer we maintain our function and our health and get to do all those things we love without all the limits that come as our medical conditions advance. 100%. It's a really good tip. And like you say, it's a... (laughs) <laughs> lifestyle and I always say healing is a marathon not a sprint so yes it's, yes why it's good to implement slowly so your the changes that you are making can be done long term not just short term so and again for those of you you know start the start with the small things start with like I said if all you have your insurance picks up a blood glucose monitor you can test several times a day just do it for a week See where the issues are coming and start with the small stuff. And then when you're really ready and you save up a little money, come see one of us Mm -hmm. um, professionals. Because again, we can go a little bit deeper, go a little bit more, making sure again that you're safe, making sure that you're supplementing with the right things to really aid and complement and even enhance or increase the healing your body's doing. Like, you know, I say this every time, you know, Fiona doesn't pay me money, even though I wish she would. No, I'm just kidding. Um, (laughs) I'm a huge, huge believer in her supplements. The the Kygenesis uh, kidney support protocol is been amazing for my folks. Is it for all of you out there? No, because we need to look at your medications and your supplements and so many things. So don't just blindly do things if you're taking a bunch of stuff because herbs and medications can interact. But for a lot of you, this is a perfect solution and it works beautifully and synergistically to really promote healthy kidneys and blood sugar control and blood pressure control. So, Mm. Yeah, all the big drivers. Well, Kelly, you are the expert on diabetes and kidney disease, and I really appreciate your words of wisdom. I think there's some just really basic tips that people can put in there and and hopefully implement in their diets to improve what will not only be their blood sugar levels, but also we know bringing down those refined carbohydrates, as you mentioned, reduces blood pressure. So it'll help with that as well. And they are, as we said, the two biggest drivers of chronic kidney disease. So we need to bring them down. Kelly, if you um, want to work with Kelly, she works at KNI. I'll put her details below. And of course, the amazing team at KNI COVID has been amazing for this because now everyone knows how to work online. So it, no matter where in the world you are, if diabetes and kidney disease is something you need support with, then I can highly recommend Kelly. As you can see, she is a compassionate, beautiful being and also really practical. So you'll have really good step-by-step tools to be able to uh, manage and work with your blood sugar levels. So Kelly, thank you again for your wisdom. I always appreciate it. And um, I know we'll have you back shortly. I've got some more topics in mind for you. (laughs) (laughs) And um, I'd really like to deep dive on your take on keto in type 2 diabetes. I know I had Ian speak about type 1, but to really, I think there's still a lot of confusion about exactly what people eat. So maybe we'll tackle that next time. Time. Yeah, love it, love it. Awesome. Remember to hit subscribe. Um, if you want to know more about what we do, head to www.kidneycoach.com. And we're on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok with all of those things with a forward slash kidney coach. As I said, hit subscribe, hit like, that helps our algorithms, and you'll get notified next time we put up a video. Thank you for being part of our community. Kelly, again, thank you. We hope you found this information useful. Bye. Thank you, Fiona. Bye, everybody. Have a great Bye. night.